Good morning, church. This morning, I have a few announcements this morning, and I'm pretty sure Beth probably has something to say. <laughs> so, um, we have a board meeting on Tuesday night at 7 p.m., our church council, and uh, it's quite people that come out for that. Chicken Biscuit is set scheduled for October 10th from 4 to 7. And uh, the night before, we're going to be picking chicken and killing potatoes, right? Kill potatoes the night before pick the chicken in the morning. So, um, and if you'd like to be a part of uh, uh, um, Artvine selling some uh, Tupperware and soup. They're still having soup selling November 8th, and they're having, they're selling razor knives. And we sell uh, If you need a razor knife, let us know. Also, um, what else do you have? I had something. Uh, Thursday, 7 o'clock, we're going to start practicing. And also, uh, 55 over luncheon is Thursday. From 11 to 1, you come here. Uh, the menu, we're going to see. You'll be surprised. We're going to be surprised. Deb <laughs> and I made the stuff last night, a test run. I'm confident <laughs> Remind you of the old school days. Let's put it that way. And uh, that, that, and that's it. I think that's it. Better, Bible study. What? Bible study. Oh, Bible study is going to start Wednesday evenings. Uh, we're going to talk about God in the pandemic. Um, see where God's at. Uh, how's He speaking to us at this time? So that's what we're going to be discussing. This uh, book by N.T. Wright, and we're going to go through uh, some Old Testament, and New Testament, see what God's speaking to us. In this, uh, I think that's it. That's Here we go. Here we go. I told him I know you. You know, I, I don't want you missing it too much longer. Um, hey, I just wanted to let you know um, the trip to Lancaster. We did cancel it this year because of the COVID, um, so we just extended it for next year. Um, it will be Thursday, June twenty fourth. We leave here somewhere around quarter till seven, seven o'clock, and we go halfway, get out, get a break. You can get something to eat on your own at that point at, at a restaurant. Lancaster, we will be eating at Good and Plenty, and then we will be seeing the show Esther. And then on the way back, we stop again to give everybody a break. Again, you'll be. This, the price is $145. That includes your coach bus trip, your meal at Good and Plenty, and the show. And we don't make any money on this. This is just a cost, you know, what it would cost. About 25 people on the bus right now. Um, to keep it at this cost, we'd like to get a, you know, it fits 50. So at least 20 more, that would be great. Um, a lot of people are hesitant about signing up for it now because you don't know what you're gonna be doing next May and if something, or next June, and you don't know. Um, but I need as many deposits as I can by October um, so that I know how many we have. And by January, I would like to have the remainder paid so I can order the tickets. If you order your ticket and you say you're gonna go and something comes up and you find that you can't go, I have until May to get refunded for it. So you're not locked in if something would come up. And that's what I'm finding a lot of people saying, well, I don't, I don't know yet. Um, but I, like I said, I need it by January to get the tickets. Um, we have a blast on the bus, so we have a good time. And the trailers that I've seen are awesome. So um, if you're interested, have the reservations. Um, and if you know anybody that wants to go, please let me know. Thanks.
together and sing our opening hymn this morning, number 370. Father, to you I release. 
least the cares and concerns of this world, knowing you love me enough to give your only Son on my behalf. Consider in me a Savior, and once again, I accept what you have done for me as sufficient. In Jesus' name. Multiplying it in his word, the word. 
Fill us with your Holy Spirit this day as we come to you and acknowledge our In Jesus' holy name, we lift our prayers. Amen. An unspoken. Huh? An unspoken. An unspoken. Any others? Let's go to our prayer time then with our prayer hymn this morning. I need.
Surely we do need you, Lord God, this day. This very moment, this hour that we are gathered here today. So we give you praise and thanksgiving that the church is here and that the church is still able to do your work in our communities. Open our eyes to the need around us. For there are more than what we probably ever know. Help us to be of service to you, to be your hands and feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fill this congregation today with your Holy Spirit. Surround us with that great cloud of witnesses. You know, oh Lord God, you are here. While we've had joys this morning, graduations and new job starts, we thank you all for traveling mercies that you've shown. We'll continue traveling mercies for those who will travel this week. We lift up a prayer for the Lord God today. And whatever that cause is, Lord God, we know that you will intervene, you will act. Continue to pray for a partner. Shelly and her health concerns that she's dealing with. Pray for Del. Pray for Gretchen and for Dawn as he continues to struggle through his stroke. Pray for other loved ones and friends that are upon our hearts today as we come to you with those prayer requests. Of your intervention. Hear our quiet prayers, God, as we bring them to you. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning is Philippians uh, 1. As Paul writes this. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I'm hard pressed between the two. My desire is to do so that is far better. But to remain in the since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share your repose to you in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. So that whether I come and see you and hear about you, I will know that you are in one spirit, striving side by for the faith of the gospel. You are in no way intimidated by your opponents. This is evidence of their destruction but of your salvation. And this is God's will. For he has graciously granted you the privilege of not only of believing in Christ, but 
for the suffering for him as well. Since you are in trouble that you saw I have, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of God. Peace be God. She reads it, and then I would read it, and then there heck I've had an opportunity where I sat and read it the whole book. I just sat there and read it. She it. Jack Reacher stories. Think about Jack Reacher stories and Lee Child, right? They start out so slow. They just seem like the first like six. But then Pick it up, pick it up. And by the end of it, you go, I, I don't want this book to end. And then you start looking forward to the next one to come. Why is it that, like the Lee Child book, life seems to pick up steam? The first one. Got some tired fans here. Oh, I know. I know. I feel it. <laughs> get to that eight minute, and you'll be down by one or two runs. And start playing with a little more urgency. Well, most people. <laughs> but start picking it up, you know, start picking it up. And then when you find it, you might get that knock. Knock out of the park, walk off home, run at the end. Excitement. Or the two minute drill in a football game. Where you come down and, heck, we're down by two scores, we only got two minutes left, and the offense starts really pouring it out there, and the defense starts playing on the Why is it we wait to the end? To the end of the game. The last 30 seconds. Endings are important. What about the end of life? I watched a movie the, a while back. It was Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson, bucket list. You know, two guys that deal with cancer and trying to fit in all the life they can before it all came to an end. Most people, when they start facing their end, you know, I've noticed, start to speak in positive language. Positive about life. Positive about family. Positive about their place in life. They live in the present. Even though being exposed to death, they cultivate a spiritual life. They start to reflect on what has my life meant. For me, for others. We come to the end of life. Just like a Jack Reacher book. It's him. But the reality is, the reality is we need it to him. I know that's very hard to hear, but it needs to end someday. For Paul writes, for me, living is Christ, but dying is gain. He's going on to a life of fruitful labor for the Philippians and for him. Even though there's a part of him that desires to depart this life and be with Christ. You've got to remember where Paul's writing this letter from. He's in jail. He's in jail. Again. 
And the thing is, even while in jail, Paul is a, in, affecting, maybe even infecting, the community that is around him. Jailers, other prisoners. From them, the gospel is starting to spread around that community. And he's writing these letters from this jail cell. Encouraging these churches, encouraging the Philippians to take part in their part of the, of the kingdom. Sharing that gospel, being positive. I want you to know, he said, that what has happened to me has actually helped me spread this gospel. So it's become known throughout the whole Imperial Guard and everyone else who is imprisoned for Christ. Paul is in prison, but even there, he is full of the confidence that his relationship with Jesus Christ is making a difference in the lives of those around him. So that someday, a celebration of that. Misunderstood you. Like the poor man who died because his family couldn't remember his blood type. His family couldn't remember his blood type. He laid on his deathbed. And his final words were, be positive. Be positive. The family says, we're trying, Dad. That was a growing life. There's no misunderstanding what Paul is saying to the Christians in Philippi. I am going to remain, I'm going to continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith so that I am abundantly in your closing in Christ Jesus when I come to you. Even in prison, Paul is fulfilling and living out his life in the most positive fashion. And he can live that life because he has Jesus Christ and he has the opportunity to share. Yesterday I was a witness to something. We stopped at Arterbine to uh, put some stuff up for the heritage uh, day they had today. As he was leaving, I saw a young man on a bicycle. He had John 3.16 or something written on his back. I can't, I can't remember what the verse was. But as he was there, he's, standing, he's on his bicycle. Talking to a young man, you can tell, has been in the streets. And here this guy is sharing with his faith in Jesus Christ. Giving this guy some, some to drink. He has some donuts in a bag that he shared with. And he has gospel in his heart. That's what we can do. That is living in Christ and giving Christ to others. Next week, we're going to celebrate our anniversary Sunday, and we're going to remember those we lost, and we're going to celebrate 50 years. It's all going to be a, you know, it, it's, it, it's a good time. But remember, every year we need to keep gaining. Keep gaining for the kingdom of God. That is our job. Share our faith. So that others will come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. To live this. To be excited about the life. We all know that we, you know, life's like a like a chain, a golden chain. And each day is like a, a, an increment in it, a day. In it. But the chain has a in this life. The chain has an end. And the closer we get to see that end, we start thinking about what the rest of the chain is meant. When I was working on this sermon and I kept reading Paul what he wrote here, that thing came here. Tim McGraw came coming back in my head. Talking about the guy who got the x-rays. How do you deal with the thought that of death faced Diving, Rocky Mountain climbing. I went two point seven seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu. 
fell deeper and I spoke sweeter and I gave forgiveness I've been denying. He said, someday I hope you get the chance to live like you were dying. Someday. But we don't, don't wait until you get those extra results or you get some sort of reward. Do it now. Live now. And live for Christ. For there are who are suffering right now who need those who are living for Christ to share that gospel news. To bring them into a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. And why? Because what we say this morning some sweet day we'll sing up there that song of victory. Paul knows that this life that he is living is going to, you know, it's, been, it's hard. It's hard. But the gains and there's positivities in life, how are we measuring life? How are we measuring our life? Do we, are we measuring it with the watch? Are we measuring it in love? Are we measuring it in, in sharing? Are we measuring it in friendships? Are we measuring it in the opportunities that we have to get the love of Christ into somebody else? How are you measuring it? God sent me a text this week. He was being philosophical. Doing some music. And he said, deal with this pandemic. And I, like everybody else, said, I can't take that anymore. That anymore. And then he wrote, I took the wrong end word. Now, folks, if you the end word, you need to get that out of your vocabulary. Eh? All right? Because the end word my friend was speaking about was not. Not more than next. What's next? This might be our normal. This might be it for. So what do we do with it? What do we do with our next opportunity, our next day? How can we share Christ? It, it's there in that that a sh the love doesn't stop. The message doesn't ask do not muzzle our voices from sharing the love of Jesus Christ with others. They don't do that. Because it's so important not only to know that, that, that we have a place, but that God has a place for all of us. And it requires us, however, to believe that this life is not the end. That this life, as Paul writes about, can be fruitful and necessary, and living in his Christ. But he also knows that dying, there is gain. There is gain in something eternal and greater and bigger than what we experience here and now today. You must have been listening to the country music station this week. Because I came across books and other. I can't book the book, not the chapter or the verse, but you can't tell me that this all did. In a riding books is verse. <laughs> you know I'm more and more convinced the longer that I live that this can't be. <coughs> no, this can't be. This can't be all there is. So I raise my hand. I bow my head. And I find there's more and more truth to these words written in red. They tell me that there's more to life than just what I can see. 
Don't, this is your opportunity today to commit yourself to Jesus Christ. To commit to a life in Christ and a life after a gain. If you need, you want to sing our final hymn today. If you want to come up and have a prayer with me, we'll pray about it. Pray here at the altar. Make that invitation. But I want you to know. I want you to know more than anything that whatever we face in this life, whatever it is, whatever changes are going to happen, the constant will be Christ. And the Holy Spirit will go with you through it all. About a man who was in Auschwitz when he was a child. He said, What well, in Auschwitz? He said, We gathered any scraps of food. Any scraps of food. And then it came time and lighting the door. They didn't have candles. He says, As a boy, I remember my dad taking margarine and lighting the I said, Dad, isn't that a waste? He said, Son, we a man can live three days, but he can't live three minutes. Trust in Christ. Trust in Christ. He said, Closing hymn this morning is Take My Life and Let It Be.
share it. Give it so that others may know Christ as well. In his holy name.